Hi Magnolia Kids! I am going to talk to you today about our silkworm moths. Your um, silkworms are in their cocoons, or they're about to go into their cocoons, or they've come out of their cocoons and they're moths. And about half of my silkworms have come out as moths, and half of them are still in their cocoons. Um, and silkworms usually come out of their cocoons in the morning. So when the sun comes up, that's their time. So some of, so every morning I find new ones and they come out and they're gonna get used to being outside again and they're gonna shake off their wings and they're also going to sort of shoot out some reddish brownish liquid from their bums because that's sort of like pee. They're like, I don't need this anymore. It was part of their bodies when they were silkworms, but they don't need it anymore. This is a really exciting time because you get to notice how their bodies are different. Do they, what looks the same or similar to when they were silkworms? What might look different? What has changed? So make sure you take a close look at your silk moths and notice how they look now. Then they get ready to mate. So some of them are male and some of them are females. And what happens is the females they're sort of, they let out a little bit of a chemical that male moths can smell to know that they are ready to mate. And the male moths start to do a flutter dance. They flutter their wings and they start spinning around and around and around until they sort of run into a female. And moths, these moths, they can't fly. Some of them, their wings are too small. Some of them don't even have their full wings. They just sort of walk around and spin around with and flutter until they find some uh, another one and then they put their buns together and they sort of stay stuck like that for a day and then they separate and the female moths start to lay eggs and they lay a lot of eggs they can lay about a hundred or three hundred eggs once they're all done mating and laying eggs then they die because that is the end of their life cycle. And we saw their life cycle from eggs to little tiny silkworms, mm -hmm. silkworms that grow and grow and grow and grow, to eating so many mulberry leaves, to going inside their cocoons, coming out, mating, mm -hmm. and laying eggs and dying. And so this is the end, and at the end, you can think about what you want to do for the end of their lives. You might want to thank them for teaching you so much about their lives. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to bury them. Maybe you want to put them out into nature so that something in nature might eat them so they can become a part of our ecosystem. Maybe you want to write a poem for them or a song for them or sing to them. There are a lot of things that you can do when they die to thank them and to remember them. And you might feel a lot of different ways when they die. You might feel grateful, you might feel sad, you might feel confused. You know they're dead when their bodies stop moving, when you touch them and they, their legs don't move, and that means that they're dead. And then you can decide what you want to do with their bodies. Thank you for joining me for this video. I'll talk to you again one last time about our silkworms, or our, now our silk moths. I'll talk to you again about them for the last time next week in our last silkworm video of the school year. Bye bye!